now call on Deputy Sean Kine. Kerry Nobel. Deputy Kine. Thank you, um, Alaskan Corla. <clears throat> it's uh, difficult for people uh, my age and, and younger to comprehend that places such as these laundries existed and uh, existed as institutions. It's extremely difficult to be believe that uh, people ended up in such places uh, stigmatized by society, uh, forgotten, abandoned by family in some cases. And I think uh, for too long governments have not adequately addressed the plight uh, of the women in question. Uh, this government, following agreement in 2011, set up the independent report uh, chaired by Senator McAleese to uh, establish the facts and level of state involvement. And it's unfortunate that within hours of its publication, there was an expectation from some within this House that a full state apology from the government be given. And I think this ignores the complexities of the issues and the length of the report which was to be considered and the individual cases within uh, that report. I would like to acknowledge the uh, generous time given yesterday by both the Thishik and Tonish, the uh, two victims, in, in, in hearing their very important stories, stories that need to be heard. Uh, I commend the government, the Taoiseach, uh, Minister Shatter and Minister Lynch on their work uh, and welcome their publication uh, of the report. I also welcome the Taoiseach's immediate response on the, report, uh, on the report's publication of his attention to have a full doll debate on this issue next week. And this will be an important part of the resolution process on this most difficult part uh, of our nation's history. The effects and those housed in, in, in the laundries are still felt today. Testimony from one Galway survivor states that she has, uh, still suffers nightmares 50 years on. There are plenty of examples of emotional and uh, physical abuse, of seclusion, of humiliation of women in some of the reports previously. And previous, previous reports have also shown, as I've noted before, how a frenzied public morality combined with a dominant religious force and in different governments transformed 19th century refuges into 20th century prisons and labour camps. The purpose of the report was to document the extent of the state's collusion in the laundries. And it is accepted in the report that up to 25% of entries had some kind of state involvement. Uh, most of the remaining 75% of entries were those from families, from the church itself, or self-admission, amongst many others. The report highlights that those who entered the institutions were expected to work without pay in what were cold, harsh places, and that some girls were placed in these institutions from industrial schools or by their own families, without any understanding as to why they were there or how long they, were th they would be there for. No matter what. The report uh, points to the laundry facility in Galway, in Foster Street, founded in 1824, and which the Sisters of Mercy took over as running an operation in 1845, had a capacity of 110 individuals and various occupancy rates of 110 individuals in 1951, 73 in 1954, and 18 in 1984, the year of its closure. Uh, there were gaps in the available information, the records of the Galway Magdalene Laundry, but having spoken on this issue in the House last October, I reported having seen copies of the 1911 census uh, for the laundry in, in Galway. Uh, it showed women of all ages, all Roman Catholic, and from nearly every county in the country. And a sculpture was dedicated in Galway in 2009 uh, to those women that have endured in the Mercy Laundry. And the statue is that of a woman in institutional drab holding a sheet aloft to symbolise her enforced, endless hours of work, a simple but provocative sculpture. So and the, the survivors deserve closure on this, and I'm confident that this closure will come very, very soon.